Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where I spill the beans. Well, I'm just going to be real for a few minutes and share some of my own thoughts on my own work. But before we talk about that, let me just quickly explain today's painting. So today I'm painting a bunny and I also added a few pansies. I got these references of Pinterest and just quickly combined them together in Photoshop. So my goal is to paint as loose as possible. So after this painting has dried, I'm going to gift this painting to a young girl in my church. She's been asking me to paint her a bunny, thus the inspiration for today's painting. Then there will also be a few notes on screen if you are interested in the process. I hope you enjoyed today's video, please like and subscribe if you do. So back to spilling the beans. So I've been pursuing my career since the end of 2017 and I became a full-time artist January of this year and I still don't know what I'm doing. And by this I don't mean that I don't know how to use a paintbrush, but that I still haven't found my voice in the art world. I haven't found my unique signature style. If you've been following my journey for a while or have been to my Instagram, you'll know my work consists of a large diversity of themes, colors and styles. I've been experimenting with different subjects and mixing medium all this time because that's how you learn. And I have, even though I still have so much more to learn. But why can't I just have a cohesive body of work then? Why can't I find something I like and delve deeper into that alone? And why is this even bothering me so much? So one of the conclusions I came up with is equal to three words. Perfection, indecisiveness and people pleasing. Three things I was first in line for and these things kind of work against each other. I mean, being indecisive easily bored with the same things and wanting to try everything doesn't really speak cohesive, does it? And there is absolutely nothing wrong with it. I think it's absolutely great to one day be able to say there's nothing I haven't painted. I tried every medium in a bunch of different styles and techniques. Although it's still very much possible to grow a signature style this way, I haven't. But then we have perfectionism. And this is not just me looking at my work in frustration because nothing fits together. It's also not trying new things because of the fear of failing, paint waste and an ugly piece of art that will not make me feel very good at all. So there's a lot more to cover on this one, but that's for another time. And then people pleasing. Painting what you think people will like, also falling in the category of what will sell or what people want to hang on their walls. All great things to have in mind, I guess. But it can steal the joy of creating if you are doing what you think others want to see or even for the likes on social media. I think it can really put a wall between you and what you should do and your creativity. There's obviously so much more to cover on these things, each individually, but for today let's just leave it at that. These mixed emotions can really make me feel discouraged and at sometimes even make me hate my work as a whole. I look at my work and each individual painting has value and growth and then I put them together and I just feel this unease surrounding me. I feel frustrated and I want to fix it, but I cannot go back and it's not going to happen overnight either. It's months of work and even years, who knows. And I think I get bored so easily with the same things, mostly because I haven't found what makes me truly happy to paint or capture. So I know I'm not the only artist struggling with this or feeling this way. However, sometimes when I scroll through my phone and see the beautiful work of other artists and being able to tell who the artist is just by looking at their work makes me forget that for a moment. This is why it's so important to know when to put down the phone. Comparison is a lie and it's also a creative killer. 
Admiring other artists and taking inspiration to improve your own creativity is one thing, but comparison, that is the death of creativity. So then what do I do when I feel this way? I walk away. I go for a walk on the beach, take a breath, and when I come back, I do something else entirely. Because tomorrow is a new day. Next week, a new painting. There is nothing I can do about it except trying again. Keep on going and trusting that at the right time, God will reveal His voice through me and not my own. Honestly, I think I'm a little impatient with the progress as well because I've been pursuing my art as a career since the end of 2017. Although not full-time, I only had a few hours on weekends to spend behind the easel, so the time for growth was very limited. But I did learn and I did improve my art skills over these years. But in the last year, since being a full-time artist, my growth and skills doubled in a quarter of the time because naturally, now I have more time to paint and learn. It still feels like there is not enough time in a day, a week or a month to do everything that I want to do. But it's a dream being able to do what I love full-time. It's hard work. Creating content, recording, advertising, planning, admin, keeping your site up to date and thinking what the next YouTube video should be. But then procrastinating because of so many other things you want to do and should do. And then being frustrated in a tug of war between wanting to experiment with everything and also wanting a decent body of work and focusing on one thing only. It doesn't make things easy at all. So then I thought, why not share what I've been feeling on multiple occasions this year? Maybe I can encourage someone who has been feeling the same way and thinking they are the only one. As humans, we have all sorts of emotions and I think as artists, um, we usually have this roller coaster of emotions towards our art. One minute you love it and then the next you just absolutely hate it. And not just like during the process of creating the art. I think that maybe how we feel in life can also have an effect of how we see our art. Like how we feel on that precise moment can impact how we look at our art. Just as how we feel about our art can impact how we feel emotionally apart from the art. In my case anyway. For example, I cannot relax if I'm working on a painting and there's something that's bothering me but I cannot fix it right now. I cannot get my mind off, it's it's like overthinking and overthinking and it's constantly how I'm going to fix it and it doesn't go away, it stays there until I fix it, whether it's today, tomorrow or next week. I think it's important to acknowledge your feelings towards your art because if you don't, I fear it might cripple your creativity or even lead you to feeling so discouraged to never paint again or slowly starting to paint less. Acknowledge that feeling and find a way to deal with it so that you can grow and become a better artist. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and also let me know your thoughts in the comments down below.